How wonderful person, this is Anton, and it's that time of the week again. Time for us to discuss yet another proposition in regards to the Fermi paradox. Where is everybody? Why is it that despite years of search, and despite decades and decades of very active observation, no alien species anywhere out there has ever been definitively found? No extraterrestrial intelligence, no unusual megastructures, and no galactic empire trying to control everyone. The paradox that we've discussed in a lot of previous videos you can find in the description, and that's technically named after Enrico Fermi of the Manhattan Project, but in reality was also discussed by a lot of other scientists, including the iconic Konstantin Zielkowski, the father of rocketry. And today we're going to be focusing on some of the explanations and propositions sometimes referred to as the hard tipper conjecture, as well as discuss this relatively recent paper that you can find in the description that provides a bit of a counter-argument using black holes as potential sources of extremely powerful quantum computers, something that in theory we should be able to detect if this paper is correct. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty loaded topic. Black holes, aliens, and quantum computers. We're only missing two buzzwords, artificial intelligence and blockchain. Yeah, maybe next video. Anyway, on a more serious note, let's start with this conjecture that was proposed back in the 70s. And in this case, Hart's conjecture, as it's known, is relatively easy to understand. And I guess to some extent it's also relatively negative. It sort of suggests that the aliens most likely don't exist, because if they did exist, they would have already traveled across the galaxy, colonizing various stars, discovering planets like Earth a long time ago, leaving behind various colonies on a lot of different objects. With the colonization of the entire galaxy taking no more than 650,000 years. Even if the spaceships were traveling only at the tenth of the speed of light, with the maximum limit being about 2 million years, which in the process would leave a lot of different signs everywhere, including a lot of potential ruins, various robotic probes, and possibly even beacons still operating today. But due to the absence of scientific evidence for any of this, despite years and years of thorough research and occasional detection of signals that then turn out to be from planet Earth, he concluded that it's unlikely that aliens exist anywhere, at least in our galaxy. His idea was further expanded by Frank Tipler, this was just a few years later, in 1980, who proposed that alien colonization would also very likely be assisted by some kind of a self-replicating robotic form, sometimes referred to as the von Neumann machines. And since no such machines or no signs of these machines have been found in the solar system, or I guess anywhere else for that matter, he also concluded that it's most likely aliens don't exist. Moreover, even suggesting that any kind of radio messages or any kind of SETI research was a complete waste of time and money which unfortunately was also used as a political message to shut down some of these programs back in the 80s. And for me personally, even though I'm not sure where I stand on the alien thing, this was actually a huge issue. It's fine to make a scientific proposition that aliens might not exist, but calling this type of research a waste of time and money is definitely incorrect. The majority of this research still leads to some incredible discoveries with time, as we've learned from a lot of different discoveries in the last few years. Nevertheless, back then, in 1981, Senator William Proxmere ended up killing the funding for one of the SETI programs because of this argument made in their paper. As a matter of fact, this conjecture almost entirely killed the SETI effort. But without getting too much into politics, I actually wanted to discuss what modern scientists believe about this particular conjecture and why to some extent it was extremely biased and somewhat incorrect. And so even though the aliens themselves might not be around, the explanations from the conjecture are not the reasons for that. And that's actually because of a general bias that this entire conjecture is based on. It sort of assumes that advanced civilizations are going to produce bigger, larger, and more advanced objects with time. And more specifically, very advanced technology that by now should be everywhere around the solar system and include things like self-replicating robots, but also various megastructures. So things like Dyson spheres, Dyson rings, or similar objects that we should be detecting all around us. But intriguingly, around the same time, or actually even a little bit before that, Carl Sagan had a very similar reasoning, although he didn't really conclude that the aliens don't exist because of this. Carl Sagan did speculate that, in some sense, aliens should be spreading across the galaxy, possibly encountering other aliens, and possibly even interacting with certain spacefaring civilizations. But when these civilizations meet together, it will be extremely difficult to predict what's going to happen. But more importantly, it's actually a little bit unreasonable to apply sociological approach from here, from planet Earth, to something that's entirely not human. 
Just because humans in science fiction novels, for example, dream of building these megastructures that potentially will provide us with unlimited energy, it's completely incorrect to assume that this is the ultimate goal for everyone, whoever might exist out there. And it's even incorrect to assume that other civilizations might want to expand or colonize the rest of the galaxy. Maybe that's just a human thing. As a matter of fact, even here on planet Earth, quite a lot of ancient cultures were pretty happy not going anywhere, not colonizing anything, just living where they were, and only moving to different locations when the conditions in their current location became too inhospitable. And so there's absolutely no reason to assume that alien civilizations might want to colonize anything, that they might want to create robots, that they might even want to interact with anyone, and thus use the absence of these aliens in the universe as the conclusion that they don't exist. Because for all we know, they could definitely be out there in a lot of different places. By the way, there is a video about this in the description below that expands on this a little bit more. But we just don't see them because they do completely different things. Something that we cannot even imagine. And actually, no one said it better than the iconic Stephen Jay Gould, an extremely intelligent evolutionary biologist responsible for changing our understanding of evolution of life on the planet. But in this case, he said something really simple. I must confess. I simply don't know how to react to such arguments. I have enough trouble predicting the plans and reactions of the people closest to me. I'm usually baffled by the thoughts and accomplishments of humans in different cultures. But I'll be damned if I can state with certainty what some extraterrestrial source of intelligence might do. Which I think by itself presents a perfect counter-argument for this conjecture. There is absolutely no way we can imagine, understand or predict the behavior or the thoughts, if they exist, of other species somewhere out there. And so just because we don't hear anything and because we don't see anything and because there are no megastructures or self-replicating robots running around does not really mean that the aliens do not exist. They could exist, but just not do anything we can even imagine. Like this unusual alien blob that for all we know could be intelligent life. Oh uh, yeah, just to clarify, it's not though. This is definitely not life. This is just a video. But I mean, it could be, but it's not. But it could be. Nevertheless, based on this conjecture, we can definitely make certain conclusions. First conclusion is that it's unlikely that there are very old galactic civilizations with very similar behavior to humans that would want to colonize everything. In other words, the galactic empire probably does not exist. We can also make an assumption that if alien civilizations exist out there, their ultimate goal is completely different from what we can imagine. They probably don't go flying around spaceships, introducing themselves to everyone, and they're also unlikely to create these vast structures, megastructures, or even vast megacities, visible from really, really far away, from hundreds of light years away from us. As a matter of fact, the so-called Kardashev scale, that suggests that these civilizations eventually grow in size and start to consume even more energy, eventually becoming Type 3, where they can utilize the energy of the entire galaxy, are most likely not real. Some scientists have even suggested that it's possible that most civilizations do quite the opposite. They kind of miniaturize things and they become extremely efficient. But the main idea being really simple. Instead of creating super large structures, the level of advancement of a typical civilization is really measured by the amount of miniature stuff they can manipulate. In this case, things like molecules, atoms, and eventually subatomic particles. And once they reach these levels, it's unlikely that they would actually need to manipulate anything else on larger scales. Just like the discovery of the atomic energy transformed our society, the manipulation of even smaller particles can lead to even further advancements, potentially even providing unlimited energy that way. And based on modern understanding of physics, and specifically based on the Nobel Prize in Physics from 2022, it's really, at the moment, all about quantum physics. Trying to figure out the quantum reality and how the quantum world works, how it interacts with everything around us, and how it can potentially lead to completely new technologies, including new ways to communicate. And this is where we get to the next obvious explanation for why we don't hear anything. Maybe we're just listening to the completely outdated technology. Maybe nobody is actually using radio waves to communicate anywhere. And maybe once you reach a certain point where you can actually use the energy that we still don't even have, the idea of quantum communication and quantum computing becomes a reality, which is when we might start hearing things around us. And it just so happens that this recent paper kind of explores this a little bit further, with the premise here being pretty simple. These super advanced civilizations that might have achieved perfect ways of manipulating quantum world might want to rely on super powerful quantum computers. And the most ultimate quantum computer would be a black hole. At least for the scientists behind the study. And because of all of the recent advances in quantum physics and quantum computing, 
and all of the modern research that tries to understand this better, it wouldn't really be too far-fetched to assume that this is maybe the ultimate goal for a lot of advanced civilizations, at least when it comes to computing and when it comes to communication. But modern physics also tells us that in terms of storage of quantum information, black holes seem to be the best. And so when it comes to processing and storing quantum information, one might assume that advanced civilization would want to use something like this. But intriguingly, according to the scientists in this paper, these black holes would not be natural. They would actually be artificial, very likely smaller than a typical black hole, but also more energetic than the ones we see around us. Black holes that would be created through some kind of a process of particle collision, and that would then emit all sorts of photons and neutrinos through the process of Hawking radiation. You can learn a little bit more about this concept in one of the previous videos in the description. And so the scientists in this paper assumed that these types of black holes would also produce a very specific type of high-energy neutrinos, detectable by facilities like the IceCube Neutrino Observatory located in Antarctica. The facility that's technically able to detect even a single neutrino passing through the layers and layers of ice. And this is something that's been proven many times, with many of these detections then localized to a very specific location in an ice skies. And once these neutrinos are found, by looking at certain types of photons, it might become possible to identify if this is actually one of these artificial black holes, slash quantum computers. But naturally, this is a very hypothetical proposition, something that the scientists kind of thought of, something that made sense to them, but something that still does not explain anything about the Fermi paradox or the non-existence of alien signals. Nevertheless, a very intriguing proposition that does involve a new potential type of a black hole that we've never considered an artificial black hole, maybe created by an alien species, and possibly even used for other purposes, such as the Penrose process, the process that allows us to steal energy from the black hole, making these objects, technically, a source of unlimited energy. And intriguingly, this idea and this process, originally proposed by Roger Penrose, has officially been shown to be possible using analog black holes right here on Earth. The experiment and the research should be available in the description below. But other than that, well, for now at least, that's all we have. We have the hard tippler conjecture that's unfortunately a little bit too biased for its own good, and then we have several counter-propositions and counter-explanations that essentially suggest that we probably just don't understand aliens at all, if they exist. Maybe they don't exist. And we've explored some of these other ideas in the videos you should be able to find in the description below. And as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, this is going to be a series I'm going to be continuing pretty much every week, for as long as there are topics to cover, so do check out the entire playlist for the Fermi Paradox in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.